I'll introduce myself. My name is James Hughes, and I would like to welcome you guys to the Superdoor Configurator uh, Creating Quick and Easy Doors in Revit presentation. I work for ATG. You can see our logo down there in the bottom right. And ATG is a platinum level Autodesk software provider, as well as Bluebeam and a number of other partnerships. Uh, a Autodesk Platinum partner is someone who has the best customer service, the best technical support, for sure, the best technical support, and best, best customer retention across our authorized resellers. And I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a licensed architect in the state of Arkansas, so I'll kind of be coming at this from the perspective of, uh, you know, what can this tool do for an architect? And I've got 13 years of architectural experience. After that, uh, for the past six and a half years, I've been an AEC technical specialist with ATG. So my full-time job is helping other architects as well as interior designers, uh, landscape architects, engineers, and contractors with Autodesk software. Uh, primarily, that's, that's going to take the form of training, although I do a number of ser other services as well uh, and technical support. Uh, so... Architects waste an incredible amount of time, and this is true for interior designers too, but architects maybe a little bit more so, waste an incredible amount of time on searching for the right door, um, and then also waste an incredible amount of time creating the right door, modifying uh, a door to be correct. Uh, or they don't, uh, and, and they just use something that's um, very poor LOD, or they try to use something that's generic or is a, a placeholder. And I, I only subjectively knew that or kind of had a, a feel for, um, I guess, how much wastefulness is involved in that uh, prior to working for ATG. Um, but, you know, doing my, my current job, we actually have performed a number of business process assessments, and that's allowed me to interview design teams and really kind of get some numbers to how much time they're spending in procuring different families, including doors, and kind of where they go. You know, so if it's not in the Revit template, are they going to run to Revit City first or PIM Object or to a manufacturer or to a previous project? Believe it or not, previous project is kind of the most time-consuming route that someone can take. It, it may ultimately lead to a great family, but uh, I mean, it wasn't their project in some cases, uh, or it may have been, you know, some time has passed or they might wait for someone to come back so that they can ask them where they should go. And that, that's another thing to keep in mind when you guys are looking at return on investment and time spent dealing with doors and Revit. Uh, is it's, it's normally not just the person who is looking to author the thing inside of the project. They're going to spend some time or maybe waste some time if you want to look at it that way. But then after a while, they're going to probably turn to someone that knows more about Revit and uh, burn, burn their time as well. Uh, so there's kind of a cumulative effect. Uh, and the, the numbers that, that I've dealt with have been shocking, you know, not just doors, but any family in general, you know, it, the, numbers bear out that uh, users are spending about one of their five days uh, per work week curating and uh, altering content to be able to put inside of a project. So doors are a part of that. And that's a, a number to keep in mind uh, later if you're kind of looking at the price of this thing and you're trying to figure out, well, how many uh, hours a year will we have to waste you know, across users for that to uh, definitely pay for itself? All right, uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about primarily about a CTC tool uh, that addresses this issue. And when this uh, tool, it's called Superdoor Configurator, uh, came out, I, I believe back in 2006 was around when it came out. It actually was simply a collection of families that you could uh, pay for and download. And then very quickly, the industry started creating nonsense combinations of, of the different you know, door panels and frames and such. And so a better interface was kind of sought. And so this product has kind of matured and actually continues to mature because new door families, new uh, panel types and, and frame types have kind of been added as customers have made that request. Um, so there's a number of ways that you can actually customize Superdoor Configurator or grow what it can do as an administrator or as a content creator. Um, and, and we have some videos on that uh, that I would refer to you guys to, well, particularly to the CTC uh, YouTube channel to address some of those processes. But what we're going to focus on a little bit more today is, is kind of the why. <laughs> it's, it's how Superdoor Configurator can make a solution very quickly and how uh, it can easily uh, be done. And by easy, I mean, 
you know, pretty much any yo-yo in your firm should be able to do it. Uh, and so I hope that you guys enjoy this brief presentation of the CTC tool, Superdoor Configurator. So creating Revit door families, uh, as I mentioned, is a tedious task. And it's often um, estimated that with out-of-the-box doors, or you might use out-of-the-box Revit doors, meaning they, you know, these are the doors that were installed when you installed Revit. Um, most firms are going to utilize those doors to push construction documents forward. Superdoor Configurator allows you to create custom doors specific to your project while maintaining your company standards in the same amount of time. And Superdoor Configurator is a tool that allows you to greatly reduce management of door content. And it comes with pre-created standardized door family components, which increase the accuracy and reduce the errors of, of the project you're putting together. Uh, so ultimately, you guys should be able to drop the out-of-the-box Revit content or those doors that come with Revit and leverage CTC Superdoor Configurator um, instead of using out-of-the-box content. Now, modifying out-of-the-box Revit doors actually is a very safe and, um, well, you could consider it productive way of creating your own custom door family. Uh, but if 80% of the doors that you guys create are sort of your more vanilla or standardized doors, if that lift can be done by Superdoor Configurator, then that means that you're only dealing with the 20% of left field doors that are not part of your Superdoor uh, library, at least not yet. You know, later you could look at adding those in or adding in the parameters uh, that you need to be able to schedule or tag uh, in, a, in your own sort of custom way. So today we're going to specify our main door assembly for the project. Uh, we're going to select a door frame and door panel uh, that's going to be applicable to our condition. And we're going to make selections to the parameters that control the door family before we ever place it. And then we'll also look at um, you know, what that looks like after the door has been placed. And then we'll also instantly create fully configured door families based on those selections above. So after this presentation is over, you guys will be able to visit YouTube and search for ATG USA and find this presentation and many others. Throughout this presentation, if you guys have any questions, you can just type them either in the chat interface or the Q&A or question and answer uh, box, and I will circle back towards the end. Uh, it's just kind of a small group of us. So if you guys have some questions, we'll try to dig into that. Uh, and, and I can sort of answer uh, what, what else Superdoor can do for you guys. All right. So most of this presentation is going to happen inside of Revit. So we're going to swap over to Revit um, pretty much for the remainder, and then we'll wrap up back in, in PowerPoint uh, there at the end. So I've got uh, Revit 2022 open and uh, just started a blank project. Uh, we will need a wall, you know, at least something to place a door inside of. So we'll make the world's simplest building here. <laughs> when you purchase and install CTC software, it does install on its own tab inside of Revit. And you can see I've got, uh, I'm, I'm just lousy with CTC software here. Basically everything that can benefit an architect I've installed here. So as more of a power user, I've got access to the BIM manager suite or these sort of blue tools here that kind of let me fix and, and curate uh, family content and do template work. I do a lot of batch work, um, you know, to be able to fix parameters or to uh, be able to export and import families in and out of projects rapidly. Uh, these green tools are meant for pretty much all of your users. These are ones that fix, uh, you know, your model author's common problems. Uh, and so these belong in the hands of everybody. You could make the case that Superdoor belongs in the hands of all users. I've kind of seen it both ways. I've seen uh, firms start with just, you know, a couple of seats of it for their power users to create doors for people. Uh, and that does save some time. But if you guys want to really look at saving a lot of time, eventually, I think you're going to want to get Superdoor in the hands of everybody. It's certainly designed to be used by everybody. Uh, and that way, it doesn't bottleneck still at the 
uh, you know, one or two experts in your firm, you've got, uh, you've got the ability for anybody to cook up a door type that they want to create. Now we're not going to spend much time in Superdoor admin, but it installs side by side with Superdoor configurator. I will spend a couple of minutes in here just to kind of point out some things that you guys might want to do down the road as far as uh, growing your library or, um, you know, changing uh, some parameter values or naming conventions. So let me start by opening up the Superdoor admin. Now I've already installed the content library that comes with Superdoor configurator. And that's why you can see this list of door types here. And, and this isn't exhaustive. This is kind of general uh, assembly types. So, you know, obviously you can make many, many more door types than these. Uh, but this would be gray on the very first time that I launched Superdoor Configurator, and it would prompt me to download Superdoor Families. If I didn't follow that prompt, I could click on it here. And then after just a couple of minutes of high-speed internet, you should have all of the RFA families in the correct folders. Uh, it's going to install that for you. It was created on purpose to be two separate downloads, and that's going to uh, kind of minimize the intrusiveness of, of performing updates. So if content or libraries are updated, then uh, that can be updated separately and not have to do a you know major overhaul or reinstall of uh, the Superdoor Configurator software and vice versa. If there's bug fixes to Superdoor Configurator because of some Revit 2022 patch or some other thing that happens, then that can be done without having to re-download all of the content library. Uh, we do get the question a lot, you know, where does the library content live? And when you install it, it normally is going to install to a uh, local area, but you also have the ability to, uh, you know, change the path of where that content is stored. So if one or two of your users, um, you know, really start crafting some different door panels that you want to include inside of um, the configuration possibilities, then you might want to look at having that hosted on your network somewhere so that all of your users have access to that and not just your one or two power users who have all of the cool doors or all the broken doors if they do it wrong. <laughs> all right, so we have the ability to, and if you created or copied a new door family in there, it would not have this checkbox for configured, but after it has received the uh, you know, parameter sets that Superdoor Configurator wants to be able to control that, then uh, it would, you would have this uh, configured box checked here. And you've got the ability to control which uh, frames and panels are applicable to each of the door assemblies. But that's probably about as far as we're going to take it. I will talk a little bit about the interface before we move on to Superdoor Configurator itself. If you have any questions about um, you know, how to use Superdoor, dive deeper into uh, customizing it, uh, you should click on this videos button up here, even if you're on a trial for it, uh, to be able to learn uh, what Superdoor can do for you, or just as an uh, orientation for your end users, they should click on that videos button and kind of see how to specify a door like we're going to do today here. If Superdoor is uh, causing a uh, door to I don't know, not behave correctly, or it refuses to create it, or some kind of uh, technical uh, bug exists, and you guys are on deadline, I would click on this support button. And I would say within 20 minutes, probably uh, someone from ATG who directly supports this product is going to reach out to you guys to help resolve that situation. Uh, if you just notice something kooky, then, you know, a bug basically, then you could expand uh, this list here and you could report a bug, or if there's something that you wish Superdoor Configurator did for you that it doesn't do. Like if you said, oh, I really wish it could include door hardware, you could request a feature. And just a word about that, because I do get that question uh, about Superdoor, um, you know, can it handle door hardware? The, the numbers of available hardware for doors is, is kind of a really large number. <laughs> and so what we're trying to do is uh, simplify a, 
door assembly frame and panel type from a sort of smaller batch of known quantities. Uh, and it's kind of keeping that simple. Now, it's possible always to build a, a Swiss watch and, and make something that only a few people know how to use. But, uh, you know, with door hardware, you probably are still looking at uh, adding it to your doors. If that, you know, if you've got an LOD 350 requirement for your doors and you have to show that door hardware on there, you're going to need to do the same process that you've been doing uh, to be able to host that to the door panel uh, that, that will be um, somewhat manual, unfortunately. All right, so you've got some options here to be able to learn about the software or report uh, issues that you're having, or if somebody didn't download the content, you can do that there. Let's launch uh, Superdoor next here. The premise of Superdoor Configurator is that you basically make three selections. There are five panels here, and so there are you know some more choices about parameter values and what you're going to name the thing. But as far as you know, generating the geometry and what the door um, is, I guess at its essence, it's really just these first three questions that you're answering. So this very first one here, it's going to show you the assemblies that are available in Superdoor Configurator. And so if, you know, generally we were trying to create a, a single swing door, for example, we'll just make that selection here. And then we can click next, or we could click this tray here, and it's going to advance to question number two, which is what kind of frame are we going to use? And we've got some naming um, kookiness here, so let me explain it. Uh, the first two letters are the material of the frame. So AL is aluminum, HM is your hollow metal. SHM was added just, I think, in the last couple of years uh, is security hollow metal. So people from industry were requesting um, some hollow metal doors that will actually schedule differently and the uh, geometry will behave differently. And then WD for wood here at the bottom. So the first two are, um, are just your material. Then there's a dash and the number system is the part that's kind of the kooky part. Uh, it's two numbers. And the first number is how many transom windows. And the second number is how many side lights. So a zero, zero means no transom, no side light. A zero, one is no transom, one side light. And then you can kind of control a little bit more, uh, you know, which side or, or flip that later on. Um, so for this one, uh, we'll do I don't know, some kind of a residential application. We'll put in a one transom and one side light. The A is indicating, uh, I believe that indicates that it's got a emollient separating uh, the mid part there. Let me double check that. Yeah. So if I hover over this one, then it's not showing that mid mullion there. So we'll choose wood 11A. We'll go next. Now we choose the door panel. This is the family group that most people are going to want to grow because they might deal, you know, particularly with historic doors or uh, with door paneling, you might have all kinds of different layouts. So this one normally is, is kind of the first stop that people look at adding to their content library to include more panels available uh, and configurable to the system. But, uh, you know, right now for dealing with a front door, I mean, you could uh, keep it fairly simple and just do a flush panel. Uh, I think we'll add in, we'll just do a four panel here. We'll choose next. These are parameters that you can uh, set for different aspects of the door. And there, you don't have to make any of these choices right now. In fact, it comes pre-configured. And if you are an admin for your group, you might want to actually go through on the super door uh, admin side, you know, that, that app we were just in a minute ago and preset some of those things that are uh, that kind of keep it to where it's going to by default be, you know, your, your preference. Um, so you can steer that so that these values are basically already filled out and someone may or may not even have to make selections here. Uh, there are uh, quite a few that you can see here. So th this is getting somewhat close to um, an intricate thing <laughs> to be able to build and maintain, but it has become more intricate because more and more requests have come in over time. Uh, and so you've always got the ability to, you know, strip some of this out. Uh, but as is the case with any kind of manufacturers, families, you kind of got to be careful stripping out parameters uh, and expecting other behaviors to, to act the way that you would want or other geometry to be affected the way that you want. Uh, so we've got just kind of the main 
uh, settings that you might want to affect uh, some of the different sizes. One of the benefits of making some of your parameter changes here is you get a preview of kind of a precisely demonstrated thing about exactly which dimension we're talking about here. So when it says frame depth, are we talking about, you know, the whole frame? Or are we talking about, you know, as it's, as it's spanning in the wall? Uh, and so it's kind of showing you how to affect the inset from the wall to the edge of the frame. So not to the center of the door or the outside of that. So there's benefits to seeing the graphics here and you can actually even customize these. So it's pulling these from a database. I will say that probably less than 10% of firms are actually uh, doing the work to really kind of customize their library, uh, but, it, but it is possible. All right, so we've got some more parameters for the door frame. If you don't want to make any of these changes, Obviously, all of these parameters being, you know, a Revit parameter are going to be available in the door after you place it. So you can select the door and still make changes to instance parameters and to the type parameters uh, after you've set it. So you, you don't have to decide right now, but you get a nice graphic if you do. And there's three trays of uh, parameter types uh, to kind of see those, um, those possible, uh, sorry, I'm I'm kind of reading through these while I'm, I'm doing it. So you could preset materials as well. Uh, if you wait, you know, if, if you set them now, then you're going to be uh, sort of limited to some of the materials that uh, Superdoor Configurator has on hand. You know, you've got the ability to make those your default materials if you'd rather do it that way. Uh, but obviously you can change materials. I mean, heck, you can even use... Um, global parameters to change all of the doors later at once, you know, to change them all to butter or whatever material you want to later. So you're not bound by these uh, just because it comes from Superdoor Configurator. It's going to behave like any other Revit door uh, materially afterwards anyways. Uh, and then one of the other really cool things is you've got the ability to have baked in ADA clearances. So these aren't just symbolic lines. These actually are three-dimensional um, transparent uh, pieces. And so they actually uh, will show in a 3D view, which some people may not want. So that's something to bear in mind. You, you may actually prefer to use your own symbolic lines if you've kind of crafted those, but you've got uh, different ADA clearance choices to be able to make here. Uh, I'll just I'll choose to do a latch side approach with no closer. And then on the push side, uh, I'll do a front approach on the push side. All right. I don't have to preset this. As I mentioned, uh, we could deal with that later. So that's uh, our fourth choice is presetting some of these uh, parameter values. And then the fifth and last place that you go, and you can see step five out of five, is how do we want this thing named? And then the other choice down here is, do I want to go directly into my project, which is probably what 90% of firms do, or do I want to save this thing out as my awesome door.rfa? Obviously that's not the naming convention we're working with here. This is a very formulaic naming convention. What it does is, and you can see that it, you've got your uh, family name here and then the type name. If you guys build a lot of families, then you're aware that those are two different names. So the type name shows up underneath the uh, family name. And so some people don't want to see swing occur as part of the name. They would just rather start with WD. So you've got the ability to configure all of that. And if you don't like the uh, number system for the transom and the side light, you know, you've got the ability to uh, change that naming convention uh, as well, or just override it here. But it's showing you, you know, what uh, what that uh, name is going to end up being. And if we load it directly into this Revit project that I've got going on here, we'll click finish. Normally it'll take about I don't know, eight seconds or somewhere in there to take those three families uh, out of the library and nest them into each other, uh, configure those options, and then place it, you know, start the command and place that door on your, your fingertip to be able to place. So just like any other door in Revit, you click to place. And the door is here. You can see a preview of it has been generated as well. And if we go to a 3D view, as I mentioned, those ADA clearances do show up as three-dimensional objects. So you may or may not be a fan of that, but uh, 
it can be helpful <laughs> if you've got people that uh, maybe aren't the best at uh, paying attention to ADA clearances that they need. This will make that a lot uh, simpler for them as a process. Now, how long would it take me to put this doodad together uh, if I didn't? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what my process used to be and then kind of maybe what I would do now. So if I didn't have Superdoor Configurator, uh, I would I would spend a, a few minutes looking, really looking inside of my template to see if surely there's something there. Um, some firms have um, started to only do this as curtain wall, and then they've got to create a whole bunch of doors that actually aren't doors, but they're curtain wall panels to sort of behave according to that limitation. Uh, something else that would cross my mind is I might go to uh, BIM object. I might sort of become beholden to a door manufacturer that has a lot of Revit content online and then just kind of stick with what they have and then always specify around them. There's some firms that will kind of go that route. Uh, and then uh, I, I could search through a previous project. I already warned you guys that that's going to take a while. If I can you know, ask around if someone else has done a door of this kind or if I did it, uh, you know, maybe I'm going to burn about an hour doing that. So keep that in mind on the ROI. And the worst case scenario is um, I'm going to take a door that's similar like this inside of Revit's out of the box, and I'm going to build the frame custom to that. And if, if I'm doing that, I'm pretty much in for, I don't know, man, four hours. <laughs> if, if I'm feeling like I'm kind of on target with it. Um, so all of those are, are pretty bad uh, solutions to this. Um, and hopefully you can see, even though I spent a lot of time explaining what the options you have available to you are, if I was just really trying to create this door, you know, existing conditions door or something, and I had a picture of it, uh, I could make those five selections normally in right at a minute uh, is my all in time. So, you know, if you're looking at ROI and you're comparing one minute to 120 minutes, you, know, it's, you, you don't really have to run a calculator uh, to, to start to multiply that out according to how many users you have doing that. So we did have one other option. If you don't want to push it directly into the project like we did, uh, let me run back to Superdoor here. On that very last tray, you know, on decision five here, oh, Revit says, no, if we're going to tray five, you got to pick something. <laughs> Fine. Yes, we'll, we'll make some selections here, Revit. Take me to tray five. All right. So past four. Here we go. So down here at the bottom, I do have the ability to save this thing out. And some firms, you know, if you only can wrestle one seat of Superdoor configurator for, you know, for you or, or for some power user at your firm, uh, then that means that they've got to build these doors. Now, there's still quite a bit of savings here to do that. And, and that person obviously has the ability to put on a cape and, and be a hero to be able to bust something out and still kind of deliver on other projects and such. Uh, but in that case, they would create the, the door family like this. They would save it out, hit finish, and then choose where they wanted to save that to, and then send that or, you know, kind of email that to uh, the other user. Don't do it right away. I mean, you don't want to send them an email three minutes after they ask for the door because then you've raised the bar too high. So, you know, wait till you finish some stuff and, and send that on to them. There are some firms that look at Superdoor and they think, oh, this will be great for us to build up a robust library of possible doors. I, I don't think you should do that. And and, and this is coming from someone who, you know, partially makes a living helping firms build up and make their family libraries more robust. I mean, I'm, I'm doing that three days a week with three different firms, helping them to build up their uh, family libraries. I, I'm, I don't think that they should try to come up with all of the configurations themselves and all of the options and then have to explain explain all of that to the end users and then talk them through how to access it because you're still going to have to spend the time finding the correct one for them and showing them how that works. I think it's much smarter to build it as you need the thing and then not try to save, you know, each unique door out unless it's something that you were very commonly doing and you think that you could actually um, benefit having that in your template and, and you just want to build some really unique things that you're otherwise searching for, then you might save those out um, or, or just build them actually in your template. 
Uh, but other than that, I, I don't think that you, I think you ought to leverage Superdoor Configurator to actually just run through these five panels and make your selections as, as needed. And that certainly works best whenever you've got all your users have access to this. So, all right, let me click on finish. Oh, now we're not actually saving out here. Some of these um, door types have more like if I click on swing, it has 33 frame options and 25 panel options. But if I pick something that's a little bit more specialized, like a pocket double, there's only two frame types that fit that and then 21 panel options. So it's kind of showing you the math here of, you know, how many variants of each of those is currently available, um, you know, kind of right here on that first screen. Yeah, so this one only had two. That's, that's not super impressive. <laughs> But we've got our wood pocket door frame uh, in hand, and then you can have several different, but there's not nonsense on here. So I don't have overhead coiling door panel <laughs> for my pocket door. Uh, so, you know, it came configured that way in Superdoor Admin, where it's not going to offer you panel types that are not compatible with it, you know, because that, that was one of the problems of early Superdoor when it was just this uh, library of folders of stuff is that people would combine things and then the parameters would uh, break or not, you know, behave how it should. Uh, so there's, I, I mentioned the benefit of making your parameter selections here because you graphically can see, um, you know, what they are doing here. But the benefit of doing it when it's in project is that you get to do that in context of the surroundings. Right, so if you had limited overhead space here, and you were trying to make adjustment to, um, you know, to this top um, transom window, then you know we could kind of make those choices based upon what we're actually seeing in the project here. It is harder to find it though. <laughs> it's going to be under dimensions, I would imagine. Frame depth, uh, height is going to be of our door. Uh, actually, that might be an instance parameter. Let me have a look. And height seven feet. Sorry, guys, we're doing it live here. <laughs> Let me jump back in here and actually see what that parameter is. All right, so we put in a regular swing door and we chose a wood side light and I know that wasn't the door panel I just want to get to the options here all right and let's see main door door frame no not sill height If you guys see it, you can type it in chat, but uh, I'll, I'll move on here in a second if I don't, if I'm not finding it here. Close sidewalk, side light width. Well, let me check. Uh, it probably should be dimensions, but Let's check some of these others here. Frame panel and the main door. Yeah, it's got to be here. Oh, well. Probably rough hide. Oh, well, um, you can make uh, your, your changes here in, in context of the project is kind of the point I was making. But like I said, it's, it can be hard to find the correct parameter for it. And I'd hate to jump in the family editor to <laughs> figure out which family or which parameter rather is controlling that height. All right, let me do, uh, let me do one more type of door here. If you guys have uh, <laughs> nothing in the chat, if you guys have uh, anything that you that you're wanting to see Superdoor do, just let me know, and we'll circle back and, and try that out too here. 
Uh, let's see, the sliding doors have been on here for a while. I think the detention one is fairly new. Let's see what we can do with an overhead door. Select that guy. OHC. Okay, so that's your coiling. OHS is going to be more like residential segmented. And OHVL, I've worked with these in a hangar that had a large overhead. So it kind of kicks out at an angle. So if we're doing, uh, we'll do overhead coiling, OHC, choose next. Entirely different panels available on this one. Uh, we've got slats, grill. Let's go with grill. I see that one more often. All right, and you can see the graphics are entirely different for these kinds of doors as well. Well, the dimensions and the graphics are, are going to be that way. And then when we're ready to place this combination, we'll just load this one directly in. Now, if I had done an overhead coiling door before, let's say six months before, um, how long would it take me to, if I knew the exact project to go in, find that thing, track it down and place it, you know, from some other mall project or whatever, uh, it wouldn't have been a 30 second thing. I promise you that, uh, flip this to the inside. Uh, it, it would have taken a while. <laughs> it would, it would not be a 30 second solution. Uh, and here this door is going to be configurable for me. Uh, and it has blazed an incredible amount of time off of, off of the clock so that it's available here at my fingertips. All right. So I've shown, uh, I've shown it well, fairly easy. Let's say that I, I did get hung up trying to find the transom height, uh, configuration, uh, but you know, making changes to these can be pretty simple. I mentioned earlier about like a global parameter. So we've got these instance parameters here that control, uh, your different materials on this. Uh, and if you wanted to point that to some global parameter that you had created, um, exterior door metal, right? And so if you actually had uh, made a change to that global parameter, then you could actually change all of your super doors that are uh, controlled by that. It's kind of a smart way of, of dealing with materials in a project so that you do it project wide, uh, you know, changing the materiality of it. Otherwise, you got to click on each door and, you know, manually click and set the materials that way. But you may not have that many overhead coiling doors. All right. I didn't see other requests come in, at least not yet. So I'm going to jump back over here. Uh, like I said, uh, this thing is quick and it is easy. So um, it's a fairly, fairly straightforward presentation. Uh, we have specified our main door assembly for the project. So that's kind of choosing, you know, single, double uh, overhead door. We selected the applicable door frame. So we had like a wood door, uh, you choose the correct number of transom or side lights. And we selected the parameters in the family to control size and configuration of the door assembly. A little bit of a hiccup there with the transom height, uh, but otherwise, you know, you've kind of got a lot of, parameter selection to be made there. Uh, and then lastly, we named and created a fully configured door family based on those selections and made that choice, uh, you know, not just how to name it, but whether we were going to place it directly in the project, which is what we probably do 90% of the time, or if we want to kick that out to an RFA file. Uh, our main conclusion is that we have used Superdoor Configurator to instantly create fully configured door families. I hope you guys were in your mind thinking, what would I do if I had to go out and get this door or put together something or modify something? Uh, and you know, what would that clock potentially look like versus uh, James kind of kicking through that in about 30 seconds. So I do, this concludes the webinar Superdoor Configurator uh, on Superdoor Configurator, but I, I wanted to uh, stop for a minute uh, for questions as well. As you guys can see, Superdoor Configurator is an extremely powerful time-saving tool uh, that will allow you guys to create different types of door families for your projects. If anyone's interested in learning more about Superdoor Configurator, you know, obviously you can uh, reference people to the YouTube video that's going to come out in a day or two, uh, or we've got existing uh, videos on that same YouTube channel as well. 
and also, uh, you know, we love the chance to be able to talk directly to you guys. So if you know who your ATG account representative is, you could contact them uh, for next steps. And at this time, I'm going to take a look over into uh, chat and Q&A, see if you guys have anything. I'm going to take it that that means I slam dunked the presentation. That's why there's no questions that have queued up. <laughs> That's just how I, I personally choose to take it. So I want to thank you guys. Uh, after we conclude, you guys should be able to go to uh, the YouTube, go to YouTube and do a search for ATG USA and find the recording. Uh, there's a lot of time to be saved in finding the right door and plugging it into your project. I'm James Hughes. I hope this was valuable to you guys and learning Superdoor Configurator's capabilities. Goodbye.